Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be doing something different. We'll be solving quadratics using a method commonly known as Poshan Law's method. Poshan Law is a professor at Carnegie Mellon University. He's an educator, a coach, an innovator, and a researcher, and much more. He has a website. I'll share all the links with you. He also made a video on this method about two and a half years ago. And this is a method, after I saw his video and a couple other videos on the same topic, I noticed that that was a method that I've been using for a while. I didn't even realize. And this is something that if you're a teacher, or if you are interested in becoming a teacher, this is something you can use to impress your students because you can mentally solve a quadratic equation using this method. So, this method has been known, obviously, for so long, but uh, I haven't seen it in a math book or any textbook either. So, I'll do some examples and then we'll get back to the original equation. And what is really cool about this method, I'll tell you a little later. All right, let's go ahead and get started with some examples. But before we start our examples, let's talk about some basics. I made a video on Vieta's formulas. So, here's the link. But basically, the Vieta's formulas give us two important relationships in a quadratic equation. The sum of the roots and the product. The roots are x sub 1 and x sub 2. And if a is equal to 1 in this case, then our formulas is going to be a little simpler. So we can write them as x, x1 plus x2 equals negative b. And x1 times x2 is equal to c. If a does not equal 1, you can always divide both sides by a because it's going to be non-zero. And then go from there. So we're going to use Vieta's formulas definitely. And let's go ahead and look at some examples here. So let's start with, and I'm going to call this EX, since that's an example. Let's take a look at this equation. Suppose I have X squared minus 6X plus 8. And if you've dealt with quadratic equations before, you probably know how to solve this equation using the quadratic formula, completing the square, and also, uh, what is the third one? Factoring, yes, because this is a factorable equation. Not all equations are factorable. And there's a fourth method. We'll talk about that today. Uh, again, it's known as Poshian Law's method because I believe he is the first one uh, to have made a video on this topic. Anyways, let's get started. So pretend that you don't have, have any idea how to solve uh, quadratics like formula and otherwise. So here's the idea. We, talk, we just talked about the sum of two roots. So in this case, if x1 and x2 are roots, then we can safely say that the sum of two roots are going to be 6 here and the product is going to be 8. And again, pretend that you do not know two numbers whose sum is 6 and whose product is 8. Even though you do know them, I just want to start with a simple one. So, here's what I would like to do. I want to start with the sum. Can I find two numbers whose sum is 6, but I want to use a variable so that I can kind of plug it into the second equation, which is the product. So, and these two actually work perfectly. Uh, and those are 3 plus, you know, I don't know which variable to use, like, can I use a y here? I, I think that's fine. Or we can use a t, doesn't matter, but let's use y. 3 plus y and 3 minus y. Why? Because their sum is 6. Awesome, right? That works perfectly. Well, couldn't you go with 4 plus y and 2 minus y? Absolutely. But guess what? You wouldn't have, I wrote t, you wouldn't have that nice symmetry here. That's why we want to uh, split the 6 into two pieces. So half of 6 is 3, and 3 plus y and 3 minus y are two numbers whose sum is 6. I hope this makes sense. We'll do more examples. Let's go ahead and take a look at the product. So when I multiply these two things, 3 plus y and 3 minus y, I get from difference of two squares, hopefully you know that, 9 minus y squared, and that should equal the product, which is 8. And awesome, think about it. Like A lot of times when I teach something like this, I used to tell my students, 9 minus what number equals 8? And the answer is 1, because 9 minus 1 equals 8. So y squared equals 1. And this gives us two solutions. But since we have the plus minus, you don't have to worry too much about it. But let's write it as plus minus 1. And this plus and minus signs actually going to take care of that. So we can safely say that the solutions are 3 plus 1 and 3 minus 1. Because those are the y values we found. And we just go ahead and plug them in here. So that means the solutions are 4 and 2 to this equation. And if you actually think about it, like, can you find two numbers whose sum is 6 and whose product is 8? Then I think a lot of people would say 4 and 2 or 2 and 4. 
So that's the first example. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example. And this time, I'm going to make sure that the solutions are not integers because it, with integers, it's factorable and it's kind of easier to guess. So let's take a look at x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Awesome. And again, I'm keeping the b even, but I'll show you an example where b is not even. It's not even going to be a fraction at some point, so don't worry about it. But let's, let's stick with this right now. So what are the two numbers whose sum is 4? Remember that. 2 plus y and 2 minus y. Let's go ahead and multiply those together. And the product, remember, from Vieta's formula is going to be c over a. In this case, it's 1. And this gives us 4 from difference of 2 squares, remember. 4 minus y squared equals 1. That means y squared equals 3. You can also look at it as 4 minus 1, but it's easy to guess, I think, right? 4 minus what number equals? By the way, I want to tell you something. A lot of times I've noticed teachers who teach algebra, they show their students like, okay, at this point, guys, you're supposed to get rid of the 4, okay? Let's undo addition. Okay, and students are like, this is subtraction. Okay, no, it's addition. Anyways, so add negative 4 to both sides. That really confuses people, I think. 4 cancels out, and then we get negative y squared, and then people are confused. Like, a lot of times students are going to be like, what am I going to do now? I have negative y squared. How is that possible? So, that's why I kind of like the approach of 4 minus what number equals 1. Think about it. That also makes people think. Anyways, I talk too much. I'll try to stop. So, y equals root 3, or y equals negative root 3. What does that, what does that give you? 2 plus root 3, and 2 minus root 3. Case closed. So those are the solutions. Notice that they are irrational numbers, but we could solve them easily. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example where, and B is not even even, he's not even even, and also A is different from 1. How about that? Kind of complicating it two times. So let's take a look at this example. Kind of looks scary from uh, this perspective, right? Here's the thing. First of all, I'm going to uh, make sure that a, the coefficient of x squared, is 1. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2. Divide everything by 2. No big deal, right? Now, you're thinking about, remember, the sum is always the opposite of b, right? So it's like negative b. So you have to find two numbers whose sum is 5 halves, and they have to be symmetrical. So think about ha half of 5 halves, right? So that's 5 fourths. Great. That wasn't too hard, was it? So our numbers are then 5 fourths plus y and 5 fourths minus y. If you want, at this point, you can go ahead and check that this sum is actually equal to 5 halves. It is, right? When you add them. So their product is supposed to give us, ooh, ooh, I put the parentheses too quickly, 5 fourths plus y, multiply that by its conjugate, that's the keyword, and the product is going to give you 1 half. Let's go ahead and multiply these. Difference of 2 squares gives us 25 over 16 minus y squared equals 1, 1 half. But let's go ahead and write it as 8 over 16. Now think about what y squared would be, right? 25 minus 8 is 17 over 16. And from here, y is going to be plus minus square root of 17 over 4, right? And then from here, we can easily write the solutions. 5 over 4 plus minus. If you want, you can also use the plus minus sign to just summarize the solution. And that's going to be the roots. Now, guess what? One thing that I was going to tell you uh, that is really cool about this method is that it also works when the solutions are not real. So let's go ahead and take a look at the following equation. x squared minus 2x plus, I don't know, let's make it 4. How about that? As long as you make it anything larger than 1, you'll be good. So I'm thinking about 1 plus y and 1 minus y. Let's multiply those together. I'm supposed to get 2, I mean 4, okay, not 2, F the product is 4, and this gives us 1 minus y squared equals 4, that means y squared is negative 3, uh-oh, that's not good, it is good, don't worry about it, then from here y is going to be square root of 3i, and it's opposite, because when you square, you're going to get negative 3 again, right, i is our imaginary unit, so now what, what do I have, I have 1 plus root 3i, and 1 minus root 3i, and solutions are not real. Now, let's go ahead and uh, look at our the original equation and see if we can solve it using this method. All right, so our original problem was x squared minus 2mx plus m squared minus 4 equals 0. Now, I'm thinking about two numbers whose sum is 
2m and those numbers should be m plus something let's use y again and m minus y and their product is supposed to equal c which is m squared minus 4 because a is equal to 1 from here i get m squared minus y squared is equal to m squared minus 4 see how easy that is m squared cancels out or by comparing the both sides we get y squared equals 4 which means y is plus minus 2 but that just means going back here the solutions are m plus 2 and m minus 2. I hope you enjoyed this method and this brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then be safe, take care and bye bye.